Uh, okay, let's create our first entity. Uh, if you look at the docs, all the examples just put all the entities inside one file and then call this function at the end, which will uh, move the entities to the database, map them, and yeah. Um, but I didn't find any example that will separate each entity to a separate file. So I came up with an idea. It's, it's really simple. So uh, we will create a fo file for each entity and pass this database connection uh, to a function export uh, imported from that file. And that function will create the class that represents the entity. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the best solution for this but uh, it's something that works. Uh, if, if anyone, I'm not, I'm not that good at Python. I worked a couple of projects on it uh, using Flask and SQL Alchemy, but I'm, I'm not that good. So this is the solution I came up with. So inside of entities, this create users.py. Uh, let's just create a function called def users entity. This will accept the DB instance and uh, the ORM, uh, I think this is an object, the ORM object that have all the functions we will use. Okay, so now I'll define a class called users. This will be, or oh, this will extend that from DB, the entity. Okay, so this is how uh, P Pony ORM will know that this class is part of the tables you will um, put inside the database because you passed the same instance you created here. So this DB variable should be the same one here. This is how uh, they will know. So all these classes that you created that extends the entity from the same instance will be linked to the same connection and at the end will be migrated to the database. And the default name for this model or entity will be the class name and if you wondered how they can access that so it's the variable self from inside the class dot uh, I think it's name or something like this I'm pretty sure that this is it and even from outside the class so users dot name but yeah and yeah since this is the default this is how they get the name the default way so this table will be inside, this class will be named as a table, the same name as, as the class, like this, which I don't like. So there is a way to uh, rename this or override this behavior is to use this reserved uh, property, which they look at in, uh, inside the package. So if this exists, this is the name of the table. Okay, now let's put id would be equal to rm dot, dot primary key. And now you pass the type. So this is an integer. And auto to true. This will be auto incremented. And it's a primary key. And this is the name of the column. Okay, so this is it. Now let's put another thing as first name be equal to rm dot now you can use the required function so this is required so this is not um, it's not nullable okay and there's on the other side the optional which is the opposite of required so this the type of this is string and the length is 40 and now that's Second, you can call it last, but whatever. Yeah. So the second name would be the same thing. And by the way, if you want to override the column name, so you want the name as an object to be, for example, um, y, and the name in the table to be something else, so you can pass here um, the argument column and put anything you want. So this is the name in the database. This is the name uh, when you use the data in Python. But I would just leave it like this. And h will be equal to rm dot required, and the type is integer. Now about will be equal to rm dot optional string, and you can pass nullable to false. But I think since you did uh, optional, you used the optional function. This is the same thing. But this is another way to do it. 
Now our email would be equal to rm dot required string, and this is unique, right? So you can pass uh, the unique argument and give it true, or uh, say the unique argument is true. This is named. This is called named parameters, I believe. Uh, now, yes, I think this is it. But this function should retain the users class itself. Uh, so we can reference it in other models or in other entities to define relations. But for now, this is fine. So if you return to our, if we return to our main dot Python, what I will do, I will import from users import the diff user entity. So if you know the imports in Python works on the same level at the place you are importing from, so this will look. Uh, at the same level in the folder, in the current folder. You, there is a ways to go over that, but I think this is fine. So, and before we call the generate mapping, I will define a variable called users underscore class. Uh, class will be equal to diff users entity, pass the DB, and we need to pass the RM, uh, you can say package or object. So from pony, import uh, rm I think you can just uh, leave it like this and here use rm.db it's, it's the same thing yeah I think that's a better way actually there's a kid was this is there's a kid screaming he's okay but <laughs> Uh, so yeah, db would be equal to rm to database uh, user, def users entity will return the user class which we will pass to any other entity function or the functions that defines the entities we have to establish relations which is, um, I think, um, it's, it's not that bad an idea so let's try to run this hopefully nothing breaks so python entities man so this is nice. So let me open the Pony test database. So I have an extension called SQLite in VS Code. So SQLite Explorer. So as you can see, we have the user's uh, tip. But there is something wrong, which is the name did, it did not take the custom name we created. Oh yeah, yeah, my bad because you need to put only one underscore so let me run this again try to delete table users first okay I will drop the whole database you can delete it like this now run it oh no, here. so let's, let's look at this yeah, so we override it the name, which is fine. And here is everything. And by default, uh, strings type will be text type. And if you want them to be varchar, you can just put this. So the maximum length is 40 for these. So yeah, and this is the primary key. Um, in the next video, I will define a one-to-many relation.